Hello, and welcome to this presentation on the topic of paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is an important skill for all college students, and by the end of this presentation, you will know how to put a passage in your own words without changing the meaning. You'll know the definition of paraphrasing, and you'll also know how, you're, how you can be able to find the main idea of a piece of text in order to be able to paraphrase because you're always going to want to paraphrase just the most important facts and the most important details in a presentation. So what is paraphrasing? Well, paraphrasing is rewriting a section of text in your own words. It's important to emphasize the your own words in this. Paraphrasing is used to clarify meaning. Think about a time that you recently read a passage when you looked away, were you able to restate what was said in that passage? If you weren't, then you weren't able really to clarify the meaning for that passage in that paraphrase. Sometimes we use paraphrases to shorten a longer statement, but it always maintains the main idea of what was being expressed. So, a paraphrase is a restatement of a passage's ideas in your own words. The author's meaning is retained, but your wording, not the author's, is used. So, it's effective to use paraphrasing because it can make the passage more clear and often more concise. If you sometimes think about paraphrasing something for a person somewhat younger or less experienced than yourself, you'll find that you're able to choose language that really helps to make things a lot clearer. It's also an effective review strategy because if you read a paragraph or two and you look away and you can't restate what the main ideas were, then you truly haven't comprehended the material. It's also useful for portions of texts um, where you have to have exact detailed comprehension. So for instance, if you're looking to paraphrase the essential steps in um, CPR, for instance, you know that those steps have to be in a specific order and that a paraphrase would have to follow that order. Paraphrasing is also a useful way to make sure that you understand this difficult or complicated material. So, how do we do this? Well, first of all, you have to read. You can't paraphrase until you know what you're paraphrasing. So you read slowly and carefully. And you read through the material um, enough so that you can um, start writing. This means that if you're not too familiar with the material, you'll probably read a paragraph at, the, at a time and then paraphrase that. But if you're more familiar with the topic, you can read a longer section and then paraphrase. So as you're reading, you want to make sure that you know the definitions of key vocabulary words and how the ideas in the passage relate to each other. If you're new to the material, paraphrasing sentence by sentence might be a good idea. You read each sentence and then you just simply restate that key idea in your own words. You've noticed how many times we've repeated the phrase, your own words. That's really the key to paraphrasing. While we can substitute words, and we'll look at some techniques for that in a little bit, it's important that we don't simply try to paraphrase something word by word, but rather we're working with the ideas that are in a paragraph. For words or phrases, vocabulary that you're not sure of, you can always check a dictionary or the glossary perhaps in the portion of the text that you're reading. And sometimes we are able to combine several key ideas in a more concise paraphrase. But as a rule, paraphrasing tends to take up about the same amount of space that the original text did. Oftentimes people will confuse paraphrasing with summarizing, and they're really two completely different activities. In summarizing, we reduce the amount of material to about maybe 10 to 20 to 30 percent of the original. But with a paraphrase, it's always looking to maintain the key ideas in each sentence, so it ends up being about the same amount of space as the original text occupied. So let's take a look at some examples. We have a typical passage here that might occur in a history book. And in this one, we have the statement that ancient Egyptians believed that Osiris, a good and wise king, was the first pharaoh. He spread knowledge to the other parts of the world while his wife, Isis, ruled Egypt in his place. 
Now, if we're going to paraphrase, one of the tools that we might want to employ is one that we just finished working on, and that's highlighting. So if we look at this original passage, what words would you say are key and should be highlighted? In a good example of highlighting, you may, might see something like this. Ancient Egypt, Egyptians, Osiris, king, first pharaoh, spread knowledge, wife Isis ruled Egypt in his place. Captured all of the key ideas that were in that passage. So then you're ready to create a paraphrase based on the amount of information that you highlighted. And it might read something like this. King Osiris was the first pharaoh and spread knowledge. Queen Isis ruled Egypt when he was gone. So it's a much simpler version of what we read in the text, but it captures all the main ideas. Now we can look at uh, a not so good example as well. And when you take a look at the highlighting that this person did, I hope that you're seeing the same thing I am and that there's just way too much highlighted in this instance. And so this is not going to give us a good result because when we look at the paraphrase, it is as long, no, it's longer than the original statement was. And so as a result, this person probably didn't understand the information well, and that's why there's so much highlighted, and the paraphrase looks almost identical to the original text. Let's take a look at another example. Upon returning home, Osiris was murdered by his evil brother Set, who cut Osiris's body into pieces and dumped it in the Nile River. Isis found the body and put it back together by winding linen bandages around it. Now, again, think about what the key words would be that you would highlight in this particular paragraph. Pick them out. In a good example, here's what would be highlighted. Osiris murdered Brother Set, cut his body into pieces, Isis put it back together again. I hope you caught one essential word that was not highlighted that would change the entire meaning of this passage. Can you find it? It's this simple word, by. If we look only at our highlighting, it appears that Osiris murdered his brother Set instead of being murdered by his brother Set. So we always have to be careful with our highlighting. So paraphrase passage that would work would be something like this. Osiris's brother Set killed Osiris by cutting his body into pieces, and Isis put the body back together again. So you see that there are some details, like the linen bandages, that are left out, but aren't essential to the key understanding of what transpired in terms of this murder. Now, a poor example, let's take a look at the highlighting that would be done here. Okay, not enough to really make sense of what occurred historically in this passage. And so as a result, the paraphrase doesn't really give us much information, much detail or background. Now, there are some tips and techniques that you can use when you are creating paraphrases. This first set of tips and techniques I'm going to give you, it, please understand, is only a starting point. So when you want to express things in your own words, sometimes you can use synonyms, words that have similar meanings in yours. So if the original statement is the hardest language to learn is Mandarin, a restatement or, or a paraphrase might be the most difficult. So we're finding that most difficult is a synonym for hardest and learn has a synonym in master. Mandarin is the most difficult to master, uh, would then be an uh, appropriate paraphrase of that particular thought. The opposite is also true. Sometimes we can find words that have the opposite meanings, antonyms, and use those in our paraphrases. So if the original statement is the man is short, could be turned into the opposite, which is, is not tall. So the man is not tall would work. If we say the school is far away, the opposite of that would be the school is not near. So synonyms and antonyms can be very useful in constructing your paraphrases. Let's look, let's look at some additional tips. Phrasal verbs. 
So you choose a two-word um, verb instead of a single word. So if we say that she discarded her used lipstick case in the trash can, instead of discarded, we could say she threw away. Um, and that would, you know, get the same point across, but it, it uses some of our own thoughts. We can also choose general verbs. So if the original statement is the factory manufactures boxes, we could use a more general verb and say it produces boxes. That would work equally as well. So the tips on this screen show you phrasal ver verbs and general verbs and how we can manipulate them in our paraphrases. And finally, we have phrases. If we say that many people in Canada are bilingual, we could turn the word bilingual into a phrase that reveals more of what it actually means. So we could say many people in Canada speak two languages. And so we're using a phrase in place of a single word. Now I have a major caution for you. And yes, it does have a skull and crossbones for a very good reason. Substituting words like we just went over with these tips and techniques is a very helpful tool but it does not constitute paraphrasing. I have to share the story of a student I had once. And this particular student found for um, his author's biography assignment a wonderful source of information. And so very painstakingly, sentence by sentence, he went in and changed a word or two in each sentence and then turned that in as his paper. Well, needless to say, it came back as totally plagiarized, because when you substitute words alone, it is not enough to create a paraphrase. To create a paraphrase, the key step is to look away from the original text and then say it in your own words. If you can't do that, you didn't comprehend what was in the original text, and so you should reread it anyway. And so you need to be able to restate in your own words without looking at the original. Most of us can, you know, sit with a page in front of us and say, you know, oh, did you understand that? Oh, sure I did. But if we took the page away and asked you to explain it in your own words, if you can't do that, then you're not ready to paraphrase yet. So again, the tips and pointers that we went over are helpful, but they don't alone constitute paraphrasing. It's only a paraphrase when you are able to look away and say it in your own words. So now it's your turn. Remember what the rules are. You're going to read the passage carefully. You're going to find the main ideas and highlight any important words or phrases. It might be a vocabulary word. And then you're going to put the main points in your own words. So here's the passage from the book. In 1857, a British expedition led by Richard Burton and John Speck set out to find the Great Lakes shown in Ptolemy's map. After reaching Lake Tanganyika, the two men split up because Burton was ill. So, on the sample assignment sheet that you've been given, go ahead and highlight the words that you think are most important in this passage. And after you've highlighted those, then write your own paraphrase of this paragraph. At this point, I would suggest that you pause the video and then restart it once you've done those steps. Highlight the key ideas and then type up your own paraphrase and then restart the video at this point. I'll pause now. Welcome back. So here's the passage again. And here are three different paraphrases of that passage. Richard Burton and his friend looked for the Great Lakes, shown on Ptolemy's map. The men split up. That's one version. In 1857, Richard Burton and John Speck searched for the Great Lakes on Ptolemy's map, but they had to split up when Burton was ill. Or, two men from Britain looked for the Great Lakes but had to split up because one was ill. Which one of these paraphrases most closely mirrors what you wrote? Ah! 
If you chose the middle one, that is the one that is the best paraphrase of the three that is provided. So again, just a reminder to you, paraphrase only the basics of what you're reading and use questions like our SQ3R te techniques to focus your paraphrase on what's really important. If you can't look away, be ready to reread the passage in, until you can express it in your own words. Don't get hung up on individual words because we know that we can substitute those with synonyms, antonyms. We can switch up verbs from singular verbs to a phrasal verb. We can go to a more general verb. And point number five, look away from the page while you're paraphrasing. I can't emphasize that enough. It's the, the step that will save you from submitting work in this class or any other class and being accused of plagiarism. Many times students wander into the area of plagiarism accidentally. They don't intend to set out to try to fool anyone. It's just that they haven't learned the skills of paraphrasing well enough to be able to produce an adequate paraphrase of the material that they're using for a source. And then in your paraphrase, make sure that the relationships are part of the paraphrase. For instance, the example that we had of Set murdering his brother. You have to get those relationships correct in order for the paraphrase to make sense. So now, here's your quote test at the end of this video. Um, I've given you a passage here. It also appears on the handout. So I want you to read the passage, highlight those keywords, and then create a paraphrase of the passage in your own words. And then you're going to submit this assignment on Blackboard. And that concludes this video presentation of our topic for the day, paraphrasing.